What a day. Celebrate. This is not an end. This is a new beginning for Nelda. And this should bring anticipation to our hearts. If you're a born-again believer, then this is something that you look forward to, really. As we were praying with the family, it brought to my attention that death is not the end. It's the beginning of something. And uh, it's a door. And uh, Miss Nella went through the door. And the moment that we ceased to live here, I mean, the very moment that Miss Nella ceased on Sunday, ceased to live here, she began to breathe celestial air in heaven. And what a glorious thing. Can I get an amen this morning, okay? Uh, it's a glorious time that we're going to have. We're going to sing, and uh, we're going to uh, have a video by the family singing, and we're excited about that. Are you all excited about that? <laughs> okay. okay. And, um, and then we're going to get in the Word. And I pray that each and every one of us will walk out of here excited about heaven. Aaron's going to lead us. You would please stand with me as we sing there. What a day that will be. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears. Thank you. <clears throat> Nelda Larson, 61 years of age, passed from earth into heaven on March 17, 2024. Nelda was born on February 13, 1963, in Texas, the daughter of Melvin and Sandra Pierce. She graduated from Ferris High School in Ferris, Texas in 1981. She continued her education at Baptist Bible College in Springfield, Missouri, where she earned her uh, BA degree in Christian education. And on June 15, 1984, she was united to marriage to Paul Larson at Brian Baptist Church in Springfield. <clears throat> Over the years, she worked for Friendship Haven, KFC, Walmart, and Harvest Baptist School. Nelda enjoyed spending time with her family and her friends, taking trips to visit family. She was uh, one of the charter members of the Harvest Baptist Church. Nelda is survived by her husband, Paul, of 39 years of marriage and um, four children, Gabe Larson, his wife, Susanna, Stephen Larson, and his wife, Heather, Aaron Larson, his wife, Cassie, and Joseph Larson, his wife, Kayla. 13 grandchildren. I won't begin to read all their names, okay? I tried. I, I just, Brother David, her mother in law, Lornis Larson. She is survived by her nieces and nephews. 
She was preceded in death by her father, Melvin, and her mother, Sandra, siblings, Peggy, Ernest, and Beverly, and the mother-in-law, Norma and Shirley, Norman and Shirley Larson. Um, we're glad that we're able to be here today and celebrate with you. Let's have a word of prayer and ask God to, um, you know, could I, Gabe, would you come lead us in prayer? Thank you. We thank you for the eternal hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And we thank you in just a couple weeks here as we'll be celebrating Easter once again. Uh, the price that was paid and the power that provided that hope. And uh, of course, we thank you for my mom. We thank you for uh, um, the life that you gave her, the influence that you allowed her to have, the, the testimony for Jesus that she was. Thank you that um, that when you were finished preparing a place for her, that you took her to a place where she will know pain and sorrow no more. And I pray that you bless our time together. Amen. You can be remain seated as we sing this song, "Wonderful Grace of Jesus." <laughs>
may remain seated as we sing, I'd rather have Jesus. Thanks. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his name. cannot find the essence of Miss Nelda in just reading an obituary. Her life declared a message her obituary cannot capture. There's a little background music going on there. Okay. It's once in a century God will bring a couple into your life <coughs> that can demonstrate the life of Jesus Christ. And that couple demonstrates Christ more in their adversity than they do on their mountaintops. There are a couple whom God's hand is upon in a unique way in that the fact through their suffering they shine the brightest. Really we are what we are in our sufferings. On our good days it really is not the demonstration of who we really are. Paul and Nelda and their family have been such a demonstration. I was blessed. I met them 30 years ago here in Fort Dodge. Obviously, they were charter members of the body of Christ, and it's taken people like them that have made this marvelous church. If it weren't for people like them, we wouldn't have what's here. Hundreds and thousands have been saved through the ministry. Anytime Nelda entered a room, there was an immediate presence of humor and joy. Her dry sense of humor was always something you look forward to experiencing, I guess. This couple served in the bus ministry. The Sunday, they were Sunday school teachers. Paul's still a Sunday school teacher. So thankful for you, Brother Paul. Usher, nursery, 
sang special music, taught in our Christian school for 17 plus years. She was an incredible mother. She was an incredible grandmother, and she was an incredible helpmeet for Brother Paul. Nada had an immeasurable love for her husband and her kids and her grandkids. She would speak of it often. She had a special love for her church, and more than anything else, Nada had a special love for her Lord. I don't know if you brought a Bible or not. I'll read some scriptures here with you. If you don't have a Bible, then listen attentively in 2 Timothy in chapter 3, and we'll look in 2 Timothy chapter 4 in just a moment. But I'd like to pick up two verses out of 2 Timothy chapter 3, and that would be verse 10 and verse 11. And we find the Apostle Paul is coming to the end of his journey, and he leaves uh, a message with uh, Timothy, a testimony that I think is well uh, related to Miss Nelda. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10 and 11 says this. It says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions. And Paul says, What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. I'd like to run down that just real quick and apply it to Miss Nelda as I was looking at the scriptures that came to me. Uh, the Bible says, Paul said, this is at the end of his journey. This is his last letter he's writing before he's to be uh, taken out into glory. But Paul writes this, he says again, he says, but thou hast fully known my doctrine. You never had to wonder about Miss Nelda. She believed the word of God. She believed the Bible. The Bible was her friend. The Bible was the final authority in her life. We knew her doctrine. The Apostle Paul says, Thou hast fully known my manner of life. That word manner of life means, it literally means she was a Christian. She wasn't, uh, I, I know that, that sometimes we say, okay, if you're saved, you're a Christian. I, I don't know if that's really true. I think we can be saved, but are we a Christian in our life? Nelda was a Christian. She was not only a child of God, but she demonstrated that she was a child of God. Thou hast not only known my doctrine, thou hast fully known the manner of life, but Paul says, Thou hast fully known my purpose. There was no doubt in the purpose behind Brother Paul and Miss Nelda. Their purpose in life was to do what God says, that whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. It says, Thou, Paul says, Thou hast fully known my faith. There was no doubt about Nelda's faith. Her faith was supreme. She knew something that most of us sometimes can't get our brain wrapped around, that through all of their sufferings, and, and, uh, and it sounds like, I, like I'm just constantly highlighting the suffering, Paul, but you know and I know that's been the testimony God gave you and Miss Nelda. And it was through that that the Bible tells us that um, she knew these things, that all things work together for good. Something, she had an had ability to have her mind wrapped around that. And then the Bible says that thou hast not only known my manner of life, but thou hast fully known my purpose. And I think Miss Nella had purpose, and, and she did not live for herself. There are testimonies all over this auditorium of young people that sat in her Sunday school class. I think she taught three-year-olds for a while. Is that right? three-year-olds, and, and then she taught in the Christian school, and, and uh, my children have expressed to me what Miss Nelda has meant to them, and, and all over this room we have that. We have these young men here, the Paul Bears. She's influenced them. That was her purpose of life. Paul said, Thou hast fully known my faith. Nelda's faith was supreme, and uh, she knew that God, she knew God. There was no doubt about it. You never wondered. She wasn't hot and then cold and in and then out. She was always steady. It goes on to say, Thou hast not only known my faith, and this is one that I think relates so much, Thou hast known my long suffering. She demonstrated this godly character of Christ. Long suffering. I looked up the word. The word itself, it insinuates endurance, insinuates perseverance which we all have seen that in Miss Nelda. And then it says, Paul says, Thou hast fully known my charity. In other words, his love, his love for others. You never question Nelda's love for you. I don't, as far as I know, we didn't have any cross time in our life, her and I. She always loved me. She always loved others. Her love for the Lord was supreme. 
And then he says, Thou hast fully known my patience. The word patience means the capacity to accept trouble, the capacity to be able to suffer. It means to be to tolerate life as it's dished out to us, even tempered. It means understanding, able to roll with the punches, and that she did. And then he says, Thou hast fully known my persecutions and afflictions, and we we know that that is so true for all of us. But uh, when Paul says that, he finishes up saying that verse. He says, what persecution, afflictions I endured. He said, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. I, I watched God deliver Brother Paul and Miss Nelda out of different adversities and different afflictions. And you know what, folks? That is a testimony of God in their life. Now, what I want to do, I want to jump forward there, and Tim, uh, Paul writes the uh, final words about his departure, and he says in 2 Timothy 4, verse 6, 7, and 8, here's what he says. He says, For I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. And Nelda did that. I have finished my course. She did that. Paul said, I have kept the faith. I guarantee you through the adversity all the years of her suffering that the enemy would whisper in her ear and say, are you serious? You still believe God? And yet she kept the faith. And because of that, the Apostle Paul says, for though he says, henceforth there's a laid up for me a crown of righteousness. There's a crown special for those who endured the afflictions of life and they didn't throw in the towel, they didn't quit, they kept running to the end. And that's what she did. And he says, there's a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them that also that love is appearing. Now, I, I don't know where you stand as far as timelines of when the crowns are going to be handed out. I don't think they're handed out quite yet. I think there's a time when all the saints will be there and Miss Nelda will step up to the banister of heaven and God will throw the crown toward her of righteousness. And obviously the Bible tells us at that point we will all after we get those thrown back at his feet because it was him in the first place that gave us the grace to do it. One evening this past week, Brother Paul, I was sitting in my chair reading a devotion by Charles Spurgeon. And as I read it, my mind kept thinking about Nelda, and she hadn't passed yet, but I, I thought, this is, this is the Lord talking to me. <clears throat> At the time that I was reading it, she was suffering greatly, and I, I think it was on Monday, I was at the hospital with you, and uh, they had to do CPR uh, on Miss Nelda, and uh, Brother Paul left to go to be a part of the adoption ceremony for Stephen and Heather's baby. And, and I was able to sit there and uh, ponder. <clears throat> and, uh, and I got to thinking about things. That was Monday. And then Tuesday, I read this devotion. And Charles Spurgeon used this verse out of Genesis chapter 8 and verse 9. Here's what he says. He says, concerning the dove that he sent out, Noah sent a dove out of the ark. The Bible says, here's what the scripture, scripture says, it says, but the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark. For the waters were on the face of the whole earth, and then he put forth his hand, Noah put forth his hand and took her. And he pulled her in unto him into the ark. Now Spurgeon does not relate it like I was seeing it, but what I was seeing there was this. Wearied out with her wanderings, the dove returns to the ark as her only resting place. How heavily she flies. She will drop if she doesn't get there soon. <clears throat> it seems she will never reach the ark, but her struggles go on. Noah, as he's been looking out for his dove all day long, he's ready to receive her home. She, he, she has just strength enough to reach the edge of the ark, and she can hardly fly anymore and light upon it, and she's ready to drop. But when Noah puts forth his hand, the Bible says he, puts her in, he pulls her into the ark. Mark that statement. Pulled her into the ark. Unto him, it says. 
In other words, she did not fly in of her own strength, but was too tired and weary to do so. She flew as far as she could. I think that's what Nelda did. She flew as far as she could. And then he put her, pulled her forth and pulled her into the ark with him. This act of mercy was shown to the weary dove in the scriptures and the dove was comforted by the hand of Noah. It's amazing about Miss Nelda, she was never bitter because of her weariness. Just as the dove was pulled into the ark, so it is with sinners that are weary in their sin. The master has to save them. There's no way any of you are going to go to heaven unless the, the master reaches out and grabs you. No man cometh unto the Father, but the God draws him, the Bible says. The Holy Spirit draws him. And I must inject here right now is that the fact that many of you may not know Christ. And I tell you this, there's a day you're coming. And will you go into the ark or not? I don't know that. It's between you and the Lord. But I tell you this, his hand is out for you that are wearied sinners today. And he calls you to come into the ark. It's a decision that you make. You've got to quit landing on the world stuff and you must come back to him. Christ died on the cross for us. He paid the price so that we can go to heaven. As Brother Gabe uh, mentioned earlier, Christ rose from the dead so that one day, one day I'll be in this unless the Lord tarries and I will experience the resurrected life of Christ in heaven as Nelda has already been resurrected in heaven. And it's all because of the cross. And many of you, maybe I'm looking across, there's so many of you, I know you're saved, you bear witness that you're saved, but maybe there's someone that's not. And there's no way that we'd ever want to pass this opportunity and just say to you, you could receive Christ as your Savior. You can receive Christ as I, I won't give a name, but I was just preaching in Missouri and had an 89-year-old lady give her life to Christ. It was on Wednesday night this week. So thankful. She's a sweetheart to Alice and I. And maybe you're sitting there and you think, I pondered this, I've thought about this, this is going to happen to me one day, am I ready to go? And today, God has his hand out and he invites you to come into the ark with him. I'd like for you to bow your head and close your eyes just for a moment of prayer and then I'm going to finish this message and we'll be done here. But just like I did the other night in a service, I invited people to receive Christ as their Savior. If you've never received Christ as your Savior, then God knocks at your door today and invites you to invite Him into your life. And the Bible says that, the Scripture says this, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and you believe in your heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And God invites you to receive him as your savior you say preacher if i died today i'm not sure i'd go to heaven well let me tell you something i want you to know that you know that you know that when you die you'll go to heaven and you can know that today the bible says he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son of god hath not life and i write these things that you may know that you have eternal life and if you'd say, Preacher, I want to know that I know. Will you right now turn your heart toward God and just admit to God, I'm a sinner. I have no hope. I need to be saved. And I want to believe right now in what Christ did on the cross for my sins. And I want to believe right now in his resurrection. And I want to receive the wonderful gift of eternal life right here, right now where I'm sitting. And that's you today. Sincerely from your heart and by faith, trust him as I pray this prayer. You pray this prayer. The prayer will not save you, but your heart will save you if you put your faith in Christ as you pray the prayer. Just pray this prayer. Just say in your heart, dear God, I know I'm a sinner. And I want to go to heaven when I come to the end of this life. And I need you. And I need you to forgive me of my sins and right now, by faith, I'm opening the door of my life to you. And I invite you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life and be my Savior right now. Wash me of all my sins, and I receive 
the wonderful gift of eternal life right now by faith. I receive you, Jesus, for your glory. Thank you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for helping me and forgiving me today. And I look forward to heaven. In Jesus' name, with heads bowed and eyes closed, how many of you would say, Pastor, I'm sitting here today and I prayed that prayer with you and I meant it. Would you slip your hand up right there and then back down? Just slip it up and then back down. Preacher, I meant that when I prayed that. Would you slip your hand up there and I'll be praying for you and keep you in my prayers. As I look across here, I know most of you are saved. And Father, we thank you for this time well spent together. Help me as I finish now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, before we go out of here, let me um, speak to you just a moment more. As we come to the end, we so often we're worn and weary and we have no more strength. As the Bible tells us, he allowed the dove to be able to come in. Now, I want to raise this real briefly to you is this. Listen, there are three things, briefly, that he allows us to be weary. Why did God let Miss Nelda get more weary? Three things. He allows us to be weary so that we can finally get to a place where we go, I want to go. I want to go. Miss Nelda got to a place where it's like, I want to go. He allows us to become worn and tired so that we can get to the place where we're ready for them to go. I know that, that that's a wonderful thing, really, that took place. God was kind to get us all to a place where we're like, okay, all right, Lord, please take Nelda home. She's tired. We're ready. And then he allows them to go through the weary trials of life so that we can demonstrate what it means to enter into the fellowship of his sufferings. And Nelda did that. Today, heaven is sweeter than ever before because Nelda's there. Stop complaining of your sufferings. This earth is not our home. We're pilgrims passing through. There's no safe place here. We must fly and keep our flight even when we get weary and and one day, this will be your day, and you'll go to heaven. I look forward to that day. The older I get, the more I look forward to it. But until then, Paul, occupy until he comes. Let's pray together. Father, as I finish now, bless these dear folk, incredible group of people here. So many have a testimony of your power and your glory. And Miss Nelda, Today we honor. And thank you for Brother Paul, their children, and their grandchildren. And unto him that's able to keep us from falling and one day present us faultless before his throne, we bring you glory today. And may you get more glory as we live here. In Jesus' name, amen. All right.